moment. So I would tell anybody in this room, if, you're, if you've got something that you believe very strongly in, hold to it. Sometimes it gets really dark, it gets really tight, but hold to it. Hyper-focus on it. One thing, focus on it really, really strong. I, I know these people who jump from idea to idea to idea to idea to idea, and it's like having a, a, a bucket of water and you're trying to water a, a full garden, and you're just taking all the water and you're spreading it all over a full garden when you don't have enough water. Whether if you took the water and just focus on that one plant and allowed it to grow so that it could give you the, the resources that you need to grow all the other plants around it. So, so that's, what I was, that's where I was with it for those, for those years. Now, obviously, a lot of people know your history and you've been really open about the role your mom's played in your life. During that period, that 93 to 98 period, other critical mentors, people that you relied on? For, for me, there weren't a lot of people during that time. I mean, I, I uh, would watch the Oprah show. I mean, that's the, that's the reason I started writing, but I would watch the Oprah show. And, and she, she was not even, you know, I didn't know her at the time, so it was somebody who could, I could look to for inspiration. But mm. no, there wasn't, I wish I could tell you that there were all of these people that were saying, you're going to do it, you're going to make it, it's going to work for you. But I had more naysayers and more dream killers and more people that told me I wouldn't make it mm. than the ones that did. Even, even my mother, and you have to be careful that the people that love you the most because they will try and protect you. My mother said to me, she said, you stop doing these plays, you're never going to make it. Mm. And, and it crushed me. It devastated me because this is the, this woman I love so dearly. How could she, how could she say that to me? But, but what she was speaking from the point of view of growing up in a segregated South and coming into her own and never really having her own say in life. So it was very hard for her to imagine her child having that. So, so be careful of the people that love you the most who, who tell you, who tell you you're not going to make it. And I'll tell you why. You have to understand that it could be coming from love and they're seeing the pain and the hurt that you're going through. So you can't get caught up in that as much as you need to stay focused and keep pushing forward to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Now, okay, 98 happens, the yep. breakthrough. I'm curious about one thing there that went through my mind. Do you think if social media existed the way it did Today, it existed then. <clears throat> How do you think that would have influenced that process from 93 to 98? Do you think there's a chance you would have been an overnight YouTube sensation? And if you, if you could trade for that, would you trade for it? I, I tell you what I was doing, though, because this was a time of email. So I, every night I'd go out on stage, I'd like, sign up for my mailing list. So I had my own email list of, of over, millions, uh, over 2 million people at the time when I started doing the play. So I would start... When I, when I got after like 98, 99, 2000, get into those days. So yeah. I would send out emails and we'd sell out the show without any advertising. So I knew exactly. the power of it, right. of it then. But watching it now, I think it's too fragmented. It's too, it's too, um, it's a very powerful tool. It's really great, but it's, it's, it fragments the audience in so many places, it's hard to get the concentration. So if you can use it to concentrate the audience onto, onto your product or to one thing, then that, the, to galvanize around it, then that's, that's powerful. So I don't know if it would have been as effective um, now if there had been, like all, then all we had was email. You have email, your mailing list, your website. Now you've got Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, your mommagram, your daddygram, the sistergram, <laughs> I mean every, so there's, there's yeah. it's so fragmented and hard to get the information concentrated is what I believe. Now, those five years where you're working through all this, they're obviously quite formative, right? Mm -hmm. People telling you you're going to fail. But I guess, I don't know you all, my guess is you wouldn't trade any of that. No, no, absolutely not. Every bit of it was so perfect, so on point, so important because and here's the thing that I realized. I thought I was failing, but what I was doing was being educated. I was, I was learning. I was learning all along the way. I was, I was, yeah. I said this to you, I said this to you backstage, it's like if, if I had, um, I, I paid for a Harvard education probably 50 times in the mistakes that I made or the things that I didn't yeah. know, you know, so, so that was the time to learn, yeah. Okay, so now, let's fast forward a little bit, so, producer, director, actor, how do you even think about how you deploy your time, your creativity, and across all those different roles. It's kind of inconceivable to the 
to the normal humans here. <laughs> I, you know what? You know what happened in the beginning. I didn't have any money, so I learned how to do everything. So I, again, it's back to necessity. Yeah, yeah. I learned how to do everything, but the problem became, now that you know how to do everything, you got to learn how to let some of this go. So, so the, the, the janitor in the corner, when I'm walking through the studio, I'm like, you're not going to tell me how to mop this floor because I know which solution <laughs> yeah. that goes in because I've done that job. So I think it's just very important to be able to know all of the jobs and know what everybody's doing, be aware of it, and then you can, you can make the choices of what can be delegated. But for me, I, I, it's very important that you have a good team, and it's very hard to find a good team. I, 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 say, this, I say this in my book. Um, uh, and I've said this on stage, uh, you know, I compare everybody that comes into my life, uh, you know, I put them in the category of a tree. And it's the same way in business. You, I put everybody in the category of a tree. Some people come, they're leaves on a tree. They're just there for a season. Wind blows too hard, they're gone. They can't take too much, right? Then there are some that are like the branches. They're a lot stronger. You can, you can give them more of, of, of your life. But when you put, if you walk out there too far on them, they may break and leave you high and dry. But if you get a few roots in your life, which like at the bottom of the tree, if you get a root, oh, their, whole, their only job is to hold you up and make sure you succeed. So I, 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 I equate that a lot, even in business, just try, trying to find the right people. But I'm never mad at a leaf employee or a branch employee. You know, they're who they are. But I just need to make sure that the roots are there. Mm. You know what I mean? Sure, of yeah, course. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat>